Hi guys, Michael Worthington here from 101 Media Group Show and Tell. Yes, we're going inside 101 Media Group. We're going to be talking about everything from how we do interviews, how we create business shows for our clients, how we do our live streaming and so forth. One of the common questions that comes up though is what equipment do we use? So we thought we'd show you what we are using at present, uh, but we're about to do an upgrade. So I thought, great time to do a video. Now currently we've got, this is a 4RU unit, so 19 inches uh, uh, across and is a full depth unit for what we actually use. We've got the dual monitors in here at the moment. It's an LV dual monitor screen. So this one here, it shows us our multi-views up to eight screens. And this is the output. We're using the Blackmagic ATEM switcher in here. And then we have got the webcaster here and I've actually got the extra face panel on there. But we are going to start playing with the Blackmagic Mini Studio. Uh, this thing will record the, the shows and what it's using is SD cards. Um, we use actual uh, ScanDisk uh, Extreme Pro. So these are 128 and they are class 10. And if you see the little U shape on there, it's got a three in it. So that's a really, really fast card. They'll take two cards in the slot. Uh, and basically you can just, once one's full, it'll click onto the other and keep, start recording on the other one. The other thing about this we're going to have a bit of play with is you can start loading graphics, videos and so forth and use them as you're streaming into the system. However, in a four rack unit like we've got, we don't have enough room. Now, one of the other things we've been looking at doing is putting a little computer in here to do some other enhancements that we want to run. Big shout out to John at uh, here to record. I was looking for a computer, I actually watched one of his shows and he's using a Latte Panda. And yes, the Latte Panda has arrived and it comes from a DF uh, robot here. So I'll just give you a bit of a look. They just came in today. So that's why we are going through all of this. I just want to show you what this thing is actually like. I'll put that out of the way. Um, so, actually I haven't even unwrapped it yet, first showing. This is how small the Latte Panda is. Uh, absolutely sensational. So I'm really, really excited. I haven't used it yet. Uh, there's another little lead in here, obviously for something or other. We'll work out what all this is for. Got some, and it's already, pre so it's a 32 uh, a megabyte, this one, and it's uh, preloaded with Windows 10. So we're really looking forward to using that for the Latte Panda. The other th box over here that we've got, has got a couple of things in it. We bought a cooling fan from the same people, from uh, DR, uh, DF Robot. Uh, so that's just gonna click on top of that. Uh, this is the lead that will come from the computer and will go into our ATEM switcher. So as we're driving uh, graphics through here, it's gonna come to here. And one thing we did do, and I noticed that um, a few people have got this now, and we got an acrylic case for it. So that's gonna build a little case around it, just to give it a little bit more protection when we mount it into this system. So, got a power packs coming in here, got a few things we're gonna be doing. Hope you stay with us. The first thing we're gonna do is pull apart, I've pulled all the leg, the cables out. One thing I am gonna do, because one of the things I found when I was putting our gear together, People would say, well, you just put the label, the cables in, into the right slots. And yeah, well, which are the right slots? How do you do it? You know, like things like the auxiliary on the back of the uh, ATEM switcher. What are you going to do with that? Where does that go? And where, how do you set it all up? How do you make it all talk to each other with switches and so forth? So the first thing I'm going to do, guys, is we're going to pull this apart. Okay, so this is the first thing coming out. This is a Studio Vision, so this is an LVID, uh, E-L-V-I-D. Um, on the back are all our inputs, so we're gonna be inputting into here. So that is the multi-view screen, so our multi-view output is gonna come into here. We aren't gonna use the multi-view output on the back of the ATEM switcher to achieve this. Uh, that is actually going to go through to our recording device to go to the Blackmagic Studio Mini. So we'll show you how we're gonna do that. It's got HDMI in and out because when we're in the studio, 
we actually have monitors, so we'll be using them. And then this is the actual program out here as well. And that's gonna run slightly differently for our setup. So we're gonna show you through that. Let's pop that to one side. Okay, the black magic, here we go. All right, let's put that to one side and we will pull our gear out of here. Now you will notice it is on the uh, on the tray. I'm gonna move the case out of our way. So as you see, I've taken all the wires out of this. So this is the Blackmagic ATEM switcher. I really do like this device. Uh, you don't need monitors to run it because you can actually see these actually write up green and red for what's going on. Great buttons here, I'm gonna take everyone through these on uh, where you want your audio coming from. Do you wanna follow a certain camera or multiple cameras or devices? Uh, this is the uh, web presenter. So the web presenter allows us then to do our live streams and we're using OBS and we're gonna go through that as well in going out to oh, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 internet stations worldwide now. So you can stream simultaneously uh, going through to Facebook, YouTube, and a host of other internet providers there. So we're gonna show you how we do that through OBS. A few people do it singly, but you can't do multiple uh, streams. This is what the back of the panel looks like. Um, I'm actually gonna take it off this tray just to make getting the, the SDI cables on here easier. And I'm gonna take you through all of these functions on the back, all the all the inputs, they're the SDI inputs. We've got the uh, multi-view out in there and then we'll have the auxiliary sitting up here. The HDMI inputs, there's four of those. This is the power. Remember when you get these devices, guys, it doesn't come with you know, it doesn't come with power links. Thank you, Blackmagic. Don't know why you would do that. Here's the ports for internet and the USB for the upgrade uh, and controllers. So we will be using a switcher as well so i'll show you how we're going to put that in and again we've got everything here we've also got auxiliary inputs as well which is important and i'm going to show you how to put all that together so first step is i guess get some cables get them all labeled and let's start connecting some of this stuff up i'm going to show you what uh what trays we're going to be using as well uh they're not near i will go and get them so let's take a quick break i'm going to come back and we're gonna start assembling all this so you guys get to see how an actual TV station works for recording and also live streaming at the same time. We'll be back in a minute. Hi guys, well, welcome back. After just a little bit of a brief break, uh, I've been sorting out all the wires. So this is the first stage to setting up our television unit. As you notice, I've got all the tags on the wires. And this is so when I connect them onto the back of the ATEM and the switches that we're gonna be using and the uh, web presenter and this little baby, the uh, <laughs> mini studio, they'll all be inside the travel case. And then this is the rack we're gonna use, all the, the, the sheet we're gonna use on the back there. We're gonna be putting into it, where's one of my little pieces, things like this. So this is an SDI through. Put, so we'll actually screw it on. So what will happen then, I'll have all the wires inside the box. When I go anywhere, I can just plug the wires straight onto the back of the unit. So that is why we're gonna be doing some of this. So, ATEM unit. Okay, so what I've done first off is I have labeled these for my cameras. So we've got four of these. So on the back of the unit here, you will be able to see where these come in. Now they are labeled, the SDI ones are labeled actually five through to eight, I think it is five, six, seven, eight. Yes, so there's four of them on there, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so all I'm gonna do now, I've actually labeled these cables up and this is SDI two. And my dad always said if it's uh, wires and ties, it'll give you trouble. <laughs> so here we go, SDI one. Gonna leave that out, so once it's in the box, that's gonna make it a lot, lot easier. Simply get your SDI cable. I think in some parts they call them BCN cables or BNC cables. Uh, we'll pop that on there. Number two, we'll go in here. Now the reason I've done it this way is this is how, when we get the multi-view monitor up, 
I am going to number the multi view. So I'm going to show you how to set the multi view up and customize it for yourself. So you don't have to just go off the numbers on the back of these things. And these are pretty tricky to get on, by the way. Um, you can actually customize it so your cameras go in the order. So my number one camera is always my presenter camera. So I've always know that when I've linked that camera to it. And by the way, we're using GH4s. SDI connections through, so we have a Blackmagic converter to go from the HDMI output into an SDI. Okay, the fourth one coming here, and you can see that uh, when I'm making my jokes about uh, tires and wires, I'm not too far wrong. Okay, so we've got those in there. Now, this is a thing that we do. So this is the program out. Now the program out for us is going to go straight into our recording studio. Um, so, on the back of the A10, if you have a look and you can just see it, it will say program, it will be PMG, and there's a reference in, but the PNG one or the program PGM one is sitting right there, so we'll just click that one on as well. And you're saying, thank goodness, and guess what I did? I put it on the wrong way around. But it'll be a regret because trying to get the things off is a bit of a nuisance unless you've got one of the grippers, so I'll just use that. Um, label out, Michael, remember that, um, because that's obviously the end that I want to be able to see. Now, yes, it's going to get to be fun, isn't it, when we start to put all this stuff in. Auxiliary. Now, this is the auxiliary one. Now, this is... I'm going to show you on the black magic switcher afterwards how to set your auxiliary but on the top of your uh, controller on the computer you'll see it says auxiliary click that you'll hit a whole list you can go down there this is the program feed so this so the program feed is going out now into our studio box so that's where the program feed is going to go out this program feed however is going to go into our tv station which will be the uh, two screens up on top. So I'll just make sure we find the right one. And this one, second one in on the top row is the auxiliary. So let's just click that on there. And then we have got that done. Now, huh, let's see what else I've labeled up. Labeling makes it really good. Uh, Multi-view, so, and that goes to, I've labeled that as MVTV, so Multi-view TV. The multi-view will go straight to our screen, so we can see that as well. So let's just have a look, and as it gets messy, I am going to put my glasses on so I can actually read this. So yes, so the multi-view, guys, is the actual top one here. So it's actual right on the very top, the very first one. So let's just put that on there, make sure I've got my label around the right way. So now we've got the multi-view going out there. That one is going to go to the TV. Now, I've got a couple of long HDMI cords because obviously we do a lot of studio work. And, you know, we do, oh, so they're the short ones. Here's the long ones. I'm just going to check here. Multi-view external monitor. So I've got some long HDMI cords because when we're in the studio, and we put the box, we have two monitors that makes it really, really easy for us to see what's going on. I'll leave the, it's just got a little cap I've just pulled off. On the back of the multi, on the back of the ATEM, you will see uh, the HDMI, HDMI multi-view out. I'll just double check that, better safe than sorry. Yeah, HDMI multi-view out. And it's sitting right next to the audio input it's there. What this will enable you to do is that when you're in the studio, like we do a lot of studio work, we can then plug in the larger screens, and when I'm not using it, coil it up, just put a Velcro band around that, and pop it back in the box, so when we go on, on site, we don't need to use it. Okay. <laughs> Aren't we having fun with all the wires? Okay, HDMI 2, HDMI 1. HDMI 1 is going in on the back of the 810. You'll be able to see the HDMIs. And let's put it through there. It is messy. Okay, HDMI one is going in there. Wait till we try and get this into the uh, into the road case. <laughs> uh, HDMI two, so I definitely want 
Yeah, I did it the wrong way around. Thank you very much. Let's just uh, sort that one out. HDMI 1 going into there. HDMI 2. Uh, yep, so there are four HDMIs to HDMI. These are going to go into the back, and I will show you just in a moment what these guys are going to go into. HDMI 3. Okay. So there's our three inputs. So allow us to put uh, different cameras, computers, and so forth in there. I just want to show you what it's actually going to go into in my little box of tricks here. Okay. This is a, and I'm going to put links to all the products that we use below, but this is a HDMI through. So it's HDMI I can plug in from the back. And so, so this lead will actually plug into this side. I'll be able to have a label on the outside of this panel. It will actually just click straight into here and like that. And that'll sit on the back of our box. So then we'll just be able to, when we go anywhere, computers, whatever, we'll just be able to just plug straight in. And don't have to reach inside the road case. And again, because we do studio and because we do road work as well, that is really, really important. Okay. These things need updating. Um, so which is a real pain because, where's this one? Okay, this one uses a USB-C. No, it doesn't come with the cable either. So we have to put in the USB-C cable and Michael's squidging his eyes a little bit. Make sure I get it in the right way. And that is playing up, there we go. And that way I've got it and that is labeled and that's so I can update the studio. So I've just loved that studio update cable. So that can go back over there. Okay, we have got another one here. Now this is the uh, program external monitor. So one is the actual uh, multi-view that we wanted. Now we want to try and get a, a program. So if you imagine I've got two screens up, one is going to have my eight panels on and the right hand side one is going to be showing me what is actually going on here. So in the studio it becomes really, really easy. So again, nice long lead. This will just curl up inside the box if we're not using it. What I'm going to do here is this is the webcaster. So this is what is going to be, this is the, uh, Let's make sure that is in. So yeah, HDMI look out. So we should be able to, in theory, go on there like that. If I find a problem with the HDMI, uh, I'll simply switch it for an SGI. So a bit of an experiment on this one, but basically I want to be able to take a feed out of this. I can actually do it on this box as well. I've got a HDMI out. And in fact, since the recorder is going to be always running full time, I'm going to plug it into the recorder instead. So the recorder is the Blackmagic uh, Studio Mini. Uh, I've just fed it straight into the out button on there. So that will sit over that. We're going to have fun when we put this into the box. Now, <laughs> these are the next uh, set of cables. Now they're a little bit long. Uh, I'm going to actually get some shorter ones. I just started putting this together. The guys have started work outside. Uh, the Netgear, simple Netgear, and it is a GS105, a gigabyte switch. Please get the gigabyte one. Uh, you won't regret doing that. Uh, so that is really important. Uh, one more piece of equipment here, and this is a USB cord. It is going into our webcaster. So we're just going to pop that into the webcaster, guys. Now, I haven't plugged any power cords in here. We are going to put a power pack in here. I've just got to just sort that out uh, before we go on to the next bit. But now I've got all this wonderful collection of wires. I think what we'll do, we'll get a break. I'm going to clear this table off a little bit. And I'm actually going to put everything into this little thing here. So I'll get the little screwdriver and a set of spanners. I'll load this up and I'll be able to take you through exactly what's in. Rather than you sit there and just watch me put screws in all day long, <laughs> in fact, I might do, I might just put it in fast forward for you. We'll be back shortly, and then we'll start putting everything into the box. Okay, back soon. Well, well, here we are. After a little bit of a, a break, well, what I did is I've actually installed into the unit now. There's a bottom shelf in here, full shelf in here. This is just a, a cover plate I ordered in. 
Uh, so just put that on and then I've got another shelf that I've just popped in to take the uh, Black Magic uh, Mini Studio here and that's sitting in there now. I'll just show you around the back what I've actually done to this unit before we get the rest of the gear in. Um, I did a little bit of this so you're not sitting there bored watching people put screws in. This is why I've done a full plate at the back here so I can mount things onto the, onto the plate here. I've actually put some foam underneath this to give it some more rigidity here. Uh, the power pack I've chosen has got its multiple outlets, but I've also got three USB outlets on here. They're gonna be driving things like the, the cooling fans that I'm gonna be installing. And I've also put some LED lights in here just to light the inside of this unit up. You can see this um, the shelf inside. I've actually chopped this down a little bit. It was, it was coming back quite some way, so I just took the angle grinder to it. Basically cut it down, give it a bit of file to take all the rough edges off so then the leads and the cords don't get tangled up and as I said if it's got wires or ties it's going to give us some problems. We've got wires going all over the place. Have to get some shorter leads than this at the moment I've just bundled that up to try and get it out of the way. Okay, so now we've done that stage of it. We're going to start to assemble uh, the box. So. As you remember, we put together the whole unit. We've got the Blackmagic A10 HD sitting in here and also the, um, the, the, the um, webcaster, and it's got the Teradex um, front on it there. So this is why I labeled all of these wires. Some are a little bit too long, and I am going to replace some of these, but for now it's just uh, they, what I had lying around, so let's just get them in there. These are the four inputs, nicely labeled. And I'm probably gonna switch over to these nice, fine, you can see the huge difference. And it is just gonna take up a lot less space. And I think it's gonna make the whole unit a lot less cleaner in there. Let's put them in there. These are the HDMI cords. So these are the three input HDMIs. Uh, input number four, which is blank in here. If I give you a quick look at that, that's HDMI input for there. That is where the computer is going to go. The Latte Panda is going to feed into this system. The Latte Panda, at the moment, I'm working on and setting the, the scanning rates, and I'm also building a little uh, Perspex box so I can mount it inside this unit and keep it safe. And I've also put a little individual cooling fan on that Latte Panda that came from the Latte Panda itself, so I'll let us show you that. They told me the cooling fan would actually fit inside of the uh, Perspex box when you assemble it. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's too fat. So I've had to mount it on the outside, but hopefully it'll give some little bit of airflow. And then with the other cooling fans going on in here, it should be fine. Okay, so we've got all this threading through. The next stage is to slide the whole unit up and in. And so it really does. I'm using a full case, you know, and there's guys like John at uh, Here to Record, check out his channel. Um, he's using a shallow case. Oh, I don't know how he's managed to fit it all in there. Um, but anyway, this is a full case. Uh, next step for me is to fit this in. You notice I've got some blank spots here. And what I plan to do is do some testing on the Hyperdeck Mini Studio here. Uh, one is going to be used as a, a, a record, so we've got the SD uh, buttons in or cards in here for recording. Um, but also you can load graphics into this thing and then feed it back through the ATEM switcher. So we're going to be looking at doing that. So I just want to test one unit out first. If that works out fine, uh, we'll buy a couple more units and that will fill this rack. The bottom unit is might be for some audio or a... Um, a couple of pieces of equipment I've been looking at, um, but we'll just see how we go with that. Until then, let's screw this one in place. Okay, that's about it for there. I did have all the screws loose just to make uh, positioning this a little bit easier. So the last piece of equipment that I'm going to put in before we get this thing uh, started to plug it in and test it is our um, dual monitor 
here. Uh, it's the LV. It's an SRM-7X2-LT. Uh, great little monitor. Um, great for focus peaking, just getting a better view of what is going on. This will be the multi-input and this one will be the program. Okay, so what I'm going to do before I put this in place, it's going to, I suppose we should test it before we go wiring it up. Yep, it's going to go in there beautifully. Okay, so what we need to do is have a look on the back of the leads here for the multi-view. Um, now I do have all the cables labeled. So we can just have a look at here, that's the auxiliary. So that is one that I'm going to want. Let me just untangle that. I tell you, dog tying knots in wires, but they, they create their knots in anyway. So this is the program in video. So we'll just pop that into here. And I'm using the auxiliary. Uh, what I've done is I've programmed the auxiliary and I'll show you that in another video. You just go into the black magic uh, on your computer, the control station, look on where it says auxiliary, you'll get a heap of selections. I've come down and gone program, so I can slot the program in there. The other one I'm looking for is a multi-view. Now I do have, oh goodness me. Right. Okay, let's have a look at this. Uh, that's the program out. So we lucky last as it always is, and we got multi-view. Here we go. Let's bring it back forward. So this is my multi-view channel here. Let's put this in here. And I know you can get tools to put SDI leads on, um, but that will do us for now. Okay. So the great advantage of doing leads and labeling leads is you're not fighting around trying to look at the uh, tiny bit of lettering that's on the back of the, uh, back of the gear. So let's just have a look at this. So I'm going to just fix this in place and then we're going to turn the whole system around and start wiring it up following the, uh, the labeling we put up on the back. And yes, I did draw a little grid plan before I started all this exercise to give myself some idea of what I was going to be doing. So hopefully it all works out. Let's put this in. Okay, all done. I had uh, my little fat fingers uh, get a bit of problems with the screws here, so I had to just loosen off a little bit just to move it around. But now it is all in place. So we've got this gap here. Probably another couple of these will be coming in and the Habitec Mini Studios here. But the ATM switch is now uh, all in. Everything's in. We've got the webcast with the Teradex uh, front panel on there and our dual monitors. Let's have a look around the back to see what we've, <laughs> what nightmare we've created. Basically, oh, get all these wires. And just pull these around. Try to keep them in some semblance of order. And you start to see when your leads are too long, like a lot of mine are, what a problem it can create. Okay, so as you can see, by having things labeled, it's gonna make life a lot easier in here. There the label, there the cables going up there. What I'll probably do is get a tie and tie that up there somehow. If I've got a tie in here, uh, maybe use a bit of black Velcro, see how that one works. Uh, see if it's long enough for starters. And uh, just see if I can just tuck that initial one out of the way. That seems to have done the trick on there. Um, we've got our next lead here. That's cleverly wrapped itself in between two other leads. So I'll just pull that out of there. Uh, this is the multi-view. So I'm going to do the same again with this one. Just going to fold it up, guys. Uh, and yes, I'm going to switch some for, for shorter ones. Probably when I pull the whole unit apart again to get the Teradax... Uh, uh, I mean, to get the Hyper Studio Minis in there, uh, 
um, that would be a good idea then use that as an advantage to change some of these wires I'll just use a bit of a wire tie on that and get the multi cable out of the way now this is a uh, the multi view uh, coming from the HDMI what I want this to do is to go to an external source. So I want this to go into an external monitor. So when we're in this studio, I can plug in. Um, this is actual program app. This is SGI program app. And what I want to do with this one is get it into our recorder. Um, so we're going to thread it through the bottom wires here. We're going to be looking for SDI in on the bottom there and here come my glasses so I can see properly and this is what I like to do a lot of it before I come in so there's an SDI in and it is this bottom right hand one here as I look at the unit from from the rear so let's just turn that in and there we've got that one in there as well and what we'll do is we'll just tuck that wire underneath We'll just tuck her out of the way. Okay, beautiful, excellent. Things are looking good. This is the USB. This is gonna come through uh, so we can do the webcasting, but for now, I'm just gonna pop it just on top of the unit, just so it keeps out of my way for a moment. And now we've got the HDMI uh, output, so we've got all the leads here now. What I should do now is perhaps get some of the power Ports into here, uh, which we will do right now. Okay, so the first one I'm going to grab, I'm going to plug in the HD, the uh, ATEM Studio. The ATEM Studio's power socket is, is over here. Okay, we're going to have to get some wire ties, which I will do in the break of this video. And I'm going to plug that one, I think, into here. Let's just plug that one into there. Okay, excellent. And we'll get some wire ties, and you really can see these leads are way, way too long. I'm going to have a, a shop around and see if I can get some nice short ones that I can get there. But in the meantime, let's put it under that half shelf that we put in there. That's our spare little shelf. Great little wire hidey hole. Okay, the next one we're going to have to do is the, um, the webcaster. So let's get that one plugged in. And I'm trying not to go all the wires, I'm trying to just find the right spot rather than go over the wires, guys. Because this one's gonna go here. Let's have a look at what's gonna be the best way. Okay, and excuse me, put these plugs on funny angles and never seems to be the right way that you want, want it. But in this case, not too bad at all. Let's curl this wire up. And you know, can see it is wise. And I said, you know, the guys who are using the uh, shallow systems, I, I just got no idea how they managed to squash all their wires in there. And <laughs> I think that's what they do. I think they just squash all the wires in. So we've got that one happening there. Now the last power point is um, the Elvid, oh, which is the TV. Now it takes an adapter, it's one of those little pin ones. Um, I did think I had it here, just give us one moment, I'll just go grab that. Okay, I just had this over the back. Now, this came in from uh, Europe, so it's got one of these, oh, for Australians, silly plugs, adapter, European adapter, get it into there. I am going to put it on the back, I think, of all this stuff here. Uh, probably try and get it into the back spot here. Now it's got the adapter on, it makes it uh, even tighter to get in. Let's plug that in there. And then, and you've got to use the right one or it just will not power up, guys. So, this is what I don't like to do. Start peeking into these areas in here, trying to see things. And that's why... It, I like to try and get everything pre-labeled before we do any of that. Again, this is long, and let's see if I've just got a little power adapter for our cord right over here. Let's go. Okay. So 
going, this is a pain in the neck, <laughs> as we like to say. Um, and it has gone typical under a wire. Don't want that happening. Let's just pull this thing out. Now let's plug her in. Okay. Now we've got this. Let's fold this up like so. Let's get it into here. A uh, little tiny wire tie. And, and I'll just squeeze myself into this little tiny area. And after that, I will probably go back and tidy some of this up. As you'll probably be thinking to yourself right now, I bet he goes and tidies that up after he turns the camera off. You're dead right. But let's just get that in a position where it's not going to be flicking around and annoying us. Okay, that can just sitting there for now. So, we've now got all our leads connected where we want. And the secret now to making this quite a good little unit is going to be this little patch panel. We talked about this before. Now, Delivia haven't installed the other four of these in. They're the HDMI's uh, throughput, so I'm going to put links on there. Also going to put the links to uh, John uh, from here to record because he put me on to where to buy these from. So I'm actually going to put the link to the video in which he talks about this and I think his website and you and you can go through there, do the right thing. He's the one who told me about it, so go through there. These ones are going to be nickel, like these, because these are going to be my uh, inputs. So they're the camera inputs, they're camera inputs there. Uh, that's the, um, goes to the computer, so the internet core going to the computer, and this one here is going to be for the internet itself. So there'll be a switch unit inside that this one will connect to, and then a router also, and the router will come out through there, and then when we go to events, we can plug into their system or do Wi-Fi. I've made these different colors because these ones are going to go out to the uh, external monitors. So the first one, as you, I said, is the multi-view here. So this is the multi-view one, and the multi-view for me, I work left to right, so my multi view is going to sit on the left, and I'm just going to click into the back of there, so we've got that done. I won't do all of them, or you're going to just get bored <laughs> silly, but just to give you an idea, this is, I work from left to right, so when I look, I know camera one, camera two, and I'm going to label these, so we'll simply just get the SDI one, uh, we can pop that on there. Let's make sure it's not tangled to begin with. Give ourselves a, a fighting chance. We've got the SGI 2 now coming through. SGI 3. So you can already see they want to tangle to make life difficult. And the SDI 4. So we've got them all in there now. My next stage is, before we go on, I'm going to set up the, um, the switcher unit. And I'm going to put the switcher unit into this little space here. So I'm going to set that up with the leads. I'm going to program it through the computer. I'll bring it back. I'll pop it in here. We'll get that connected in, and we'll get it connected to our systems inside so you can see exactly what I'm doing there. Now, to set up a, a switcher means you actually go onto your computer and you tell it the IP addresses. So... The A10 Black Magic has an IP address. The um, the broadcaster, as I call it, or the <laughs> yeah, recorder, uh, has got an IP. They've all got their own IP addresses, and that's what we're going to do. And also, the Latte Panda is going to be feeding into this as well. So I'll go do that, get this set up, and we'll be on to our next step. Oh, we, these ones will be going into here, by the way, just in case you're wondering. So we'll take a little break, and I'll come back, and we'll finish this off. Okay, so apart from all the wires that needing to be made shorter, and we'll tidy these up with wire ties, we've actually got everything in here. We've got all our SGIs connected. These four ports I'll just put on in a little while. I've just ordered some nickel ones. They came to black, but I just want to do nickel, so they, they tell me that they're the inputs, and uh, that's it ready to go there. Uh, the other wire that I forgot to put on was our uh, 
program out feed. So we're going to do a program out feed and probably from one of the boxes there, but I can pop that on in a little while. First of all, let's just screw this in place. So we've got some semblance of water and that way we can start to work on tidying up those leads from the inside, from the short ones to the long ones. Uh, I mean, from long to... Uh, well, there we go. Apart from a big jumble mess in there, we've got all the pieces in place. I'm just going to screw this panel on. Now, I'm going to go to work on this, uh, tidying it up with um, wire ties. So I'll get each one of those wires now and finish them off. I just want to put this in place so I don't lose it, if I can get the, the screw in there properly. There is one that wants to pry around. Hi guys, welcome back. Well, it is complete. Yes, here's the little unit. So I thought I'd just give you a quick rundown. We'll just summarize what we've done. I'll show you how a couple of little tweaks I made to the back of it. We're just about to put it into the studio now. So we've got the two monitors for program and uh, preview uh, on here. This is the ATEM HD. Uh, this is just our little plug. So we've got the uh, headphones ready to go into there. One thing about the ATEM, it only has one upstream key, and that is for your green screen work. In another video, I'm going to show you a little hack that I've done around this, so you'll get actually four to six uh, upstream keys on this little program. Uh, it works a lot, lot better. Okay, web presenter is over here, so that gives all our compression for all our live streaming. This obviously is, a, is in the flight case, so we can actually go do events for people. We can live stream their events and record them at the same time. And then we've got the recorder as well sitting down there. So that's the Studio Mini. Again, taking the dual SD uh, cards class 10 U3s going in there. I do like the dual. Once one card's full, automatically switches to the other. We've done a few tests on this. Working really, really well. Okay, let's have a look at the back of the machine and everything we did there. I do have the power plugged into it. I'm going to give you a bit of a, a demo on it but here she is all finished off one of the things we did i think you remember we actually were using the uh really thick sdi cables i went to b and h uh on on the internet there and got these really super fine ones uh and they just a small hd cable uh the bnc cable 24 inch i think they're called there um absolutely fantastic i did have my doubts i was thinking oh my goodness they're so fine are they going to be any good they're absolutely brilliant, and we switched over the HDMI ones as well to uh, thin cords. So on the back here, we have got a, uh, this is for web streaming, so I can simply plug that straight into the USB on the computer, take it straight from there. Program out, we got a uh, preview out that shows all our different screens. I'm actually going to switch it on and put it on the TV in a minute and show you that. Uh, HDMI inputs for computers and cameras. I'm going to plug in an old um, 60D, an old Canon 60D, and let's see if it reads that as well. And the SDs uh, for our G84s going in there. A couple of uh, plugs here. This one's for internet and internet out. And then we've built the router in the Latte Panda, which is absolutely sensational. We can just jump on the internet, grab anything we want there, and build it into our programming. Uh, absolutely fantastic, that little thing power brick on the bottom yes all these little tags making all the inside look ugly now uh, that's all the tagging and testing so we know it's all safe to use two update switches here this one's actually plugged into the back of the web uh, not web center the uh, studio mini and the um, ATEM switch as well that is for the web presenter that's just tied on the back here so I can plug in and do the software updates in there router green lead is the internet comes straight from the back here switch is built in the back all rocking and rolling let's turn it let's plug some stuff in guys let's turn it on i'll flick it onto the tv and let's have a look at what it looks like i'll bring this tv over here and let's plug it all in well 
There we go. Well, there we go. All, all plugged in. Uh, we've got the two cameras running. This one here is our um, 60D, the Canon 60D. I'm just trying to find the cut button here. Uh, I'll just cut it from the front and you can just see so the cuts are working. It's actually the uh, multi screen's working really well. Uh, if I put on the Latte Panda, which is in the back here, I'll just find the little button for the back, see if we can get that on. Let's see if the Latte Panda will light up. So, as you can see, everything is working. I've done some screen uh, checks on this now. But yeah, so you can see the web presenter is working. I see you can see it from here, and then the record is actually showing us the screen here. Uh, just remember that when you're actually doing your recording, make sure you're, you're clicking on your button for your sound so the sound is actually starting to get recorded, otherwise, you're going to miss out. And uh, the little latte panda is opened up in the bottom of the screen here, as you can see. And it's just firing up if I cut it onto the main. And you can see it ticking on there. So that's the latte panda just firing up in, in the background. So everything is working fantastic. Hope that's been great for you guys. Look, we're going to do some more tech. We're going to call them nuts and bolts. The uh, bolts being all the tech gear. The nuts being all those bits and pieces that go on help you build your YouTube business. Hope you've enjoyed how we've built the flight case. Any questions, please put them down below. If you want any advice, any hints or tips, just ask me. Happy to share. And, uh, yeah, please give us a like. Give us a big thumbs up. We love that. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And, hey, consider being one of our patrons. I mean, it helps us do all this stuff, helps do all the gear reviews and things like that. We're really going to go for 2019. I'd love to have your support doing that. Until next time, guys, take care and have a great business. Thank you.